Um, I think we can start as as the rest join. Um, so um, my name is Melissa Mitruki. I will be coordinating this event. Um, so uh, the reason why we decided to have this event is because um, one thing is very many people do a lot of the science projects and they have very nice ideas, very great projects that they've done, but then the thing is they do not they do not know how to deploy them or how to work on them and create um, apps that can can create so that they can create some beautiful apps that they can even show visualizations or just deploy their projects. So I think at this point I'll invite Grivin. He'll introduce himself. Um, Grivin, the floor is yours. Oh, uh, in the meantime, you can also be sharing by using from. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa, for the introduction and for having me on board. Um, you let me know if you can see my screen. Is my screen visible to everyone? Melissa, confirm. Yeah, it's yes, your screen is visible. Cool. Uh, so in this session, um, we are going to cover uh, building or design for data science apps on Streamlit. And um, just a brief about myself, I am a, a, a budding data scientist and uh, also a machine learning engineer at Obena where we work on collaborative projects with other data scientists and machine learning engineers across across the across the globe. And uh, apart from that, I am also uh, a community ecosystems builder, which is why I am also here today. I democratize and share my knowledge in data science with uh, everyone in the data community. And so that is why I am also a, a, a community ecosystems builder on top of that, I am also a YouTube content creator. There are um, well, some data science topics and uh, also events that I share on my YouTube channel. I will be able to give you the link in the in the course of time. So um, before we we start we start this event, I would just love to know um, what your level of proficiency is. Um, just to know how to gauge the level of understanding of the subject in the audience. So if you have a phone or your computer, tablet, any any computer device, just head over to slido.com and then use the use this code, the code streamlit. And um, just respond to this poll so that we can all be able to see um, from what point we will be interacting. If you are not able to see this this poll, also let me know. Is everyone able to access? I think the responses should be coming here real time. Then also, do not forget to post your questions in the Q and A sections here on Slido. I will be I will be looking at them in the course of time. So far, so good. I can only see there is one question that I do not want to display right now. But um, this is where I'll be picking questions from. So if you have questions along the session or after, still just head over to slido.com, use the code streamlit, and then be able to post your questions there. So in the first, in the first half a minute, there is still no one responding to, to the poem. There's only one person who is responding. Cool. So um, let's let's wait for everyone else to respond so that 
so that we can we can carry on. This is very important, guys, because it will it will uh, determine the the depth of our discussion this evening, and it's good to understand the the audience. All right, so just keep responding to the polls. I will come back to it before we can get hands on. So in today's session, what are we expected to cover? We are going to go through the steps of deploying a Streamlit app, and we are going to do a simple interactive visualization. Uh, and then I will also be giving tips on the best practices in developing this kind of apps for um, for educational purposes, for commercial purposes, if you want to, and and then we will be able now to to progress from there. It is going to be a highly um, interactive session. It's it's not a good slide, so I expect that you you will you will go along if you can or. Uh, you can as well just just watch and see what I will be doing. Okay, so it seems majority of the people in the audience are uh, at beginner level in Streamlit, and a very small percentage are uh, are of the expert level. So um, now uh, now to get started with uh, what we're going to do. I'll just uh, give you a high level overview of what of, of the data set that we that we are going to use for the simple project today. So the data set that I am going to be using is a data set that I got from Kegel and the link is available on the app itself. I think we'll be able to see that in the end. So um, the simple uh, project we'll be doing today will cover uh, the types of crime in, in Vancouver, Canada. And we are going to see how to visualize and communicate data with geographic properties. So this data has got geographic properties. That is to mean it has features like um, location, names of cities, names of neighborhoods, and it has got uh, latitude and longitude uh, you know, values given in it. So we are going to see how to um, how to develop animated maps and then be able to visualize them. Um, this one is just to spy your curiosity because the, the same concept can apply in a project like say, we have a data set, a Kenyan data set, and we want to plot the, uh, the, different, uh, the different or the types of uh, COVID-19 that are affecting people, the distribution of the map. If you want to be able to show that on the map, then we can be able to do it. Same for crime incidences. We can be able to do it even if it's for a city or the entire country. So the project today will involve um, uploading a data set over here, and then after uploading, saving, and then visualizing. So this is what our, 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 our project should look like in the end. It will allow us to um, look for the CSV file we want to upload, upload, visualize the data set, and then after, after loading and, and looking at our, our data set, the composition, this, this is the Vancouver data set, crime data set that I am talking about. So it has the different types of theft and the years. It spans from 2003 all through to 2007, and it's a huge data set. So after that, we will be able to visualize uh, we'll be able to visualize the different types of crime in Vancouver and we will be able to we'll be able to like set features of this map to say uh, you can be able to change the zoom level the type of information you want to display on the map uh, whichever way you like it and then and then we'll have our our final project 
So that is the simple thing we will be doing today. So you can see like how it's animated all through. And we'll be, I will manipulate it a bit to bring changes just to make you understand how the whole thing works and runs from the, from the background. So first things first, before doing anything like this on Streamlit, what you need to do is, uh, is, to, is to come up with a prototype. It can be a paper prototype. It can be a prototype that you develop using uh, uh, prototype development tools like Figma, whichever tool that is accessible to you. So for my case, uh, I just did a, a paper prototype just to visualize what I want it to, to look like because you cannot just go ahead and dive right into coding and then expect you will have good results. You should at least have an image of what you are expected to have in the end on paper. Then that will be able to guide what you do moving forward and it makes your work a whole lot easier. So after, after coming up with the prototype, you move right ahead to, to visualize your, your data set. So in my case, um, I was using Google Collabs and you could use Jupyter Notebooks, uh, whichever, whichever way you like, but Google Collabs is just an online version of Jupyter Notebooks. So um, here what I was doing is to preview my data set, do a bit of cleaning, and, uh, and then now proceed to, to develop the, the app. Because if you don't, again, understand the data you are working with, there's no way you're going to be able to come up with a smart product. It's just like modeling. You have to understand the kind of data, the features that you have in your data set. And then after that is when you can proceed to do the modeling task. So the same applies for, for the development of this kind of apps. So for me, on this, on this, on this Jupyter notebook, I import the libraries that I require. Assuming you all understand what libraries are uh, in Python, so for me, these are all the libraries I will need. So they will aid in, in performing uh, some functions or uh, any tasks that I have to do in my data set. And because I'm on Google, I mount my Google Drive folder from there. And then after mounting the Google Drive folder, then I view. You notice that I add a column, the date column. It's because I had, I had previewed this data set and I realized it. Uh, it had columns of year, month, day, hour. So I just wanted a date time column that is divided into, uh, that is split by year and month. So that is why I pass the dates using that, um, using that, that parameter in reading CSV files. And then I keep, I, I keep it as the first column over there. And then I visualize. So, um, over here, I took a sample of the data set. Why did I take a sample of the data set? The, the, the reason I took a sample is because if we have, if we have, if you look at uh, the composition of our data set here, and that you can do by a simple function in pandas, this data.info, you notice we have uh, 53,652 columns. This data, this data set is about it's about 52.6 MB and, uh, and above. So it's a huge data set. And you can imagine it is a data set composed of uh, information that is running all the way from 203 to, is it 203 to 2017? I think so. It's a lot. So because it's a lot, I do not want to work with all of it. So that's why I decided to randomly sample the data set and use a certain percentage. And for this task, I am only using 10,000 uh, of the 53,000. And I think that's not a bad number to work with. So I, I do the sample and, spread and, uh, and, and pick each point randomly. And then I can be able to see my, I can be able to see my data set over here, the longitude, latitude, all those, all those features. And now we have only 10,000 entries. I look at this neighborhood column, all, all of this is just done to clean. So uh, there are some very funny characters in the neighborhood column and I was removing those characters. After removing them, now that column was clean. And then I also noted that the latitude and longitude column, um, if 
I could just display the data set here again. If we have data, it's done. If I run the data set that we have, you notice at this point that the the data set uh the the latitude and longitude column have these last two columns it, it has some zero figures so because they are zero i just decide to drop them and the come up with a map visualization so zero and we are in vancouver canada that would give me some points on the other side of the world the map and that is what I didn't want. So that is why at this stage I drop them. So after cleaning it and everything, I try to visualize it on a worldwide map. And this is what I have. You see, like almost everything is in that corner because that is where we have Vancouver, Canada. The rest of the areas is not Vancouver, and there is no data point there. So to get a specific map, I use um, this function in um, in Plotly. It's called uh, Mapbox. So the Mapbox function. Is able to give me is able to give me uh, the Vancouver map, and then this is what I have from it. So uh, after this point, now I proceed to start developing the app. And uh, the app you see over here, this one is already live, but we are going to create a copy of this one. And then after creating a copy of this one, we'll modify a few things, see the changes, and uh, how it 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 looks different from this one and then also deploy it at uh, at the same time so let's jump over to let's jump over to the no i is displaying here uh i i created a test folder i created a test folder by the the everything else is available on my it's available on my github Griffin dash 19. So for the app that is already live, you will see it there. But for the copy that we are going to run right now um, is what we're going to test and see. So I have, I have here, I have a folder that's called test. So the test folder has got other folders. I have uh, the folder called apps and I have the folder called data. So the folder called apps is where I have my home.py, data.py, and charts.py. So the home.py, data.py, charts.py, this is what you can see. This is what you, this is what we were seeing here. The home.py, data.py, these, these, these are the apps now. The charts.py is a separate app. Data.py and also home.py. So they are all different apps. And so, uh, and so once I have my apps there i also have a folder to store my data so this is where once you upload the the csv file it runs and then saves another copy that we use to plot the to plot the map the sample copy that is now crime uh, dot one csv and then i have my main file that is the app app dot pi file so the main file runs because of um a library that is called multi-app this multi-app this multi-app um, library, this one was developed by, by a guy, I uh, found him on GitHub, he's called Pranil Nihar. So he, if you also check out Pranil Nihar on GitHub, you will be able to find um, this, this library. So this library is what enables me to, or will enable anyone to develop a multi-layered website. A multi-layered website is like, it's very, instead of one page, you can have several pages running in your app and, and you will still be able to, to visualize them uh, in just a single page without, without any problem. So you see, instead of having everything cluttered in one page here, you can have them in different pages, just like you have websites. But the prerequisite here is like, you don't need any front end uh, or back end development prior knowledge you only need fewer scripting files on knowledge and you will be good to go so everything else run on the from the back end of the streamlit servers um and also the streamlit api so uh having seen this library 
that enables us. I want to explain. I want to explain what it does. So the multi app library it has a class. This class will enable you to. It enables you to. It, it enables you to create the the multi apps and then also and then also run. So the class has a function uh, that you import, and then after importing that function, you add new apps. So this is where you add the, the new apps in the function, and then you run the, the app itself, which is why the entry point for our application, and the entry point to mean this app.py, this is the file that Streamlit runs. So this app.py, it carries everything in the apps folder data, and the from and also from the multi app file. So the apps.py file, you can you can give it any name. It can be main.py, any name, even desk.py. Uh, any name doesn't matter. So here we will import the, the class multi app from multi app library. So you see this class over here. What that has done, it enables us to these functions on on adding on adding these other apps, which is the home dot app, and, and we also have the data, and we also have the checks. You can add this list and make it even up to ten if you want to. So again, I imported Streamlit components. So Streamlit components are just tools that enables you to create or customize your own functionality in the app. Yeah. So you you can write JavaScript code. On simply to run, there is a way it works from uh, statically, or you can make it dynamic. For my case, I'm using only dynamic. That means like it runs whenever you run, or whenever you want it to engage between JavaScript, but that kind of back and forth interaction, then it will be able to to do so. So Streamlit components enables you to customize your charts, you can even make your own widgets using Streamlit components. So more about oh, more about the components is documented in the Streamlit um, website, uh, streamlit.io. So I import the components to enable me design this banner, this title banner. So the components you have here, this div, h1, these are all HTML code, but I'm rendering HTML code in Python and using the Streamlit library, um, and in the Streamlit library, I'm using the component module. So this type of banner is what we have here. Uh, if I could just go back. So the title banner is what we have over here, Crime in Vancouver, Canada. So I, I did this on my own. It, it has got nothing to do with Streamlit, but I customize it on my own to, to make it appear there. Same way, you could customize your own tools in Streamlit, and it, it and and it would still work, whichever way. You want. So we have the image.py, and then the rest, the data part. Um, I want to be able to show you guys how visualizing data on Streamlit, but then there are widgets in Streamlit. So you might see uh, in the code like st.subheader. This one will just give a subheading. Uh, in like Markdown or even like st.markdown. This one will, it will take in Markdown, uh, Markdown, Markdown type, Markdown type, you know, language or code, and it will just pass that on Streamlit and then you will be able to get the feedback. So Markdown, this way you have about. So this, this is why I write the about with that, uh, the description of the data set. And you see this link that I provide over there is what we have in the data set. If we visualize the data set, go back to the data set. So here, what we have, this data set, I have customized it using Plotly. Normally when you display data sets on, uh, on Streamlit, this is not how it appears. And I want us to run the, I want us to run the, uh, I want us to display the demo copy of this app, and then you'll be able to see. So uh, this is a page where we are having the data set, and this function is the function that we are using to get the data set. ST cache and, and ensures that once the data set is loaded on Streamlit, 
it does not need to be loaded again. So like it helps your app to run much more faster. That is why we have SD cache on, uh, on, on this function. And also like on my editor, you can see the PyCache file. That means once something, once you render something, it automatically saves. And the next time you run the app, it doesn't need to reload. So at least it runs uh, way much faster. So uh, uh, the data set, if I wanted to view this data set, the, the, the sample data set, if I wanted to view the sample data set, say, say I'd do, what I would do in this case is just say ST, because I, when you're importing something as a liar, that means uh, as a liar, so you're importing it as AKA. So I'm calling streamlit ST, so ST dot uh, data frame. Yeah. And the data frame I want to render is the sample data. Sample data one. So when, when I render this, let me, let me call it extremely data frame. When I when I render this one. Uh, it displays a different table from this one, the margins and everything. So I'll explain how I customize that table and make it look like um, it is. It's just, I use Plotly graph objects and uh, Plotly GO. Uh, it's, you, you will see me importing Plotly GO and Plotly, and also Plotly Ex Express. So Plotly GO enables you to it enables you to um, display components, but it's a low level kind of, it's, it's native. So you have to specify what you want and how you want it to look like. It's very different from Plotly Express. Plotly Express is express as, it, as its word. It just gives, it just gives, if you tell it a uh, uh, Plotly Express dot line, it gives you a line graph without you having to hard code. But because we want our data set to look nice, that is why I customize. And then after customizing it, I, I update. So uh, this one has saved already. And to run Streamlit on your, on your machine, you just need to type uh, uh, a command on the terminal or the command prompt. Uh, you type streamlit run, and we want to run, we want streamlit to run the, the entry point for our app, that is app.py. And you press enter. So it runs, and then after running, it will be able to fire up on your, on your default browser in the computer. So as let's wait for it to compile and run, then it will fire up. If it doesn't, then it gives you the local URL, which you can copy and paste in any browser and view like you want. So it's done, and then it fires up on the, on the screen. And this is what we have. So I want to, I want to look at the data set. Um, I want you to look at the data set and see the difference in how in how it it does display so you see this is how the the streamlit data set looks like there is this margin all over there is this uh this scroll bar at the edge but i want to make it look smart this is this is not well, I, I can choose to leave it at this point, but if you want to make it look much smarter and decent, you can go ahead and customize and make it look, uh, instead of this, this, you have this one, yeah? And you can specify the size, the color, whichever color you want to. And you can always Google, if you're wondering how I came about this, you just Google and see uh, the different colors, how people try to customize, and then you can apply that in your own context and be able to run. So this is the difference in the kind of visualizations. The magic there that is there is to learn as much as you can in ways in which you can customize 
the stuff that you visualize because assuming this was a school project you want it you want to give it your best you want everyone to be wowed at the end of your presentation okay so having having covered that we will jump back and now i will explain what happens in the in the home dot pi this this part we are uh, what we're doing in this part is to uh, upload a file which we choose from our our operating system that is why i'm importing os over here so we upload a file and then after uploading that file save that file um, using the the get buffer uh, get buffer method in in, fun, in in python so i save it as a write byte using the get buffer method and then i return a message with the file information so it returns a message a success message with it with the file name so i did a function to do that and that is there so in the app we are uploading the the data file so this part this data file is equals to st dot file uploader the file uploader is just another widget in in, in streamlit yeah so you can just uh you can just instantiate it to a variable and then um upload dot csv so the types of files that you can upload can be several it can be png whichever types of files so so that whenever you want to upload it can pass different that is why i did at least three file types here but for our case we are only interested in saving the csv file but it can text text files uh, excel files uh, doc files and then be able to display so once it, it is uploaded if the file type is up once the file is uploaded display the display the information and that is what i have that is what i have over here in the in the home data set so it's a huge data set takes an uh because it's 56 mb and it takes quite a bit of time to load so i will just show you how it uploads and you can see the progress while it's uploading and then it displays the file details and then it returns a message telling you the file has loaded which is exactly how we wrote our code so after after that point now then i will uh, take you to the app to the maps uh the map that we are visualizing we have already seen uh we have already seen let me just go to the map so the map that we are visualizing, Streamlit has got containers, and these containers is are what enables me to split the columns in my web page, as you can see. So that is why I have one column with this drop down and another column with this drop down. But we can create three or more drop downs in in uh, we can create three or more more drop downs in this page by by which way and then we can also add, add a function over here to change the type of map i mean you see this map there are different kind of kinds of maps in in uh, in plotly so this map is called this type of map is called a car to map but there are different kinds of maps so we'll add one component over here to show us the different kinds of the different kinds of maps so um what streamly does is, is like it enables you to unpack columns and then list the size of those columns if you know maybe you want one column to be size three you want it to be bigger than another column then you specify the size using these values uh using the integer values that you that you give in this in these parameters for st.beta columns so st.beta columns is a container and it unpacks these two columns in once you have done basic python you know that something called tuples so we will add one we will add one i will go ahead and add one column you can call your columns any names it doesn't have to be uh, column three and by the way you can specify using the with keyword or specify directly like um column one dot hoover options column one dot choice i did do that because i just wanted to make the code clean and neat so that's why i used the with keyword 
So we have added one column and uh, we will, we will, this is where we have our slider. You see, it's very simple. You just do st.slider and then it does, uh, it does the magic on your app. So I will add another column, the, the third column, that is column three. And in that column, I want, I want to list the map options, the drop down list options. Uh, map options and I pass them in a list and the list that I will pass over here is from I didn't cram all that I can't but they don't cram anything when you're coding so uh, you can just google uh, plotly the uh, plotly map box and then it will be able to give you the parameters for plotly map box so this is where i find the the api the the the, the map box uh, uh, values that do not require an api token you can as well go ahead and use an api token on the map box site you just sign in and use a token and then uh, be able to display so you want to pick different you want to pick different map types over here so i'll pick this one Uh, sorry. Uh, let's 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 pick the first three. I'll pick I'll pick those. Control C. And then I'll just copy them over here. Control V. So once I have my map options in that list, I can I can go ahead and create a, a drop down or a select box in Streamlit. So I, I can say, I can give it choice two equal to st dot uh, select box. Uh, that is the drop down for Streamlit. So I'll give it a parameter and you see the intelligence features on my code editor uh, is able to let me know what to type next. So I'll key in the label. The label, I'll just say change uh, map type. Change map type. And then we are going ahead to specify the, to give the, the map option values over there. So once I do that, um, I can now come to my app. This this is the function that defines the the scatter map. So I, I will change I will change the I will change the the map box style to and and set it to the map um, set it to choice two. So whichever choice I pick from this list is what will fill this part. So I will just change that to choice two. Two. And, and that is it. So it saves, mine saves automatically. If yours doesn't, control S every time you are done. So um, after that, you see even the zoom, I set it to zoom, which was the, which was the slider. So after that, now I, we can come back to our app we come back to our app and you see on Streamlit, it, it, is already, it has already noted the changes you have done on your local file. And it is asking whether you want to run always or rerun. So in this case, I'm not going to rerun always, but I'll just rerun. Um, okay, uh, well, you not enough to unpack three, but two, which one? Okay, yeah, I didn't specify the size of the columns here. So I'll just give it a one or so. And then, and then we, can, we can rerun. And then you see, now we have three columns in one page. Yeah, so once we have the three columns in one page, I can change the map type that I want here. So um, say I want the, the open street map 
and I want to hover by the year, and I want to see the information by neighborhood, then we can set the zoom level to maximum. So it will keep running as we change those parameters. And then now we can be able to expand. And you can play this to see the change or the distribution of the types of crimes per year. So we, we can also change this to, to view how crime is distributed in the region per, per month, per week, per minute. You can be able to see that in real time. The good thing about it is that um, I can be able to take a section of the map that I want to view, highlight that, and just zoom in. So it clears out the rest so that I'm only able to read this part. Or uh, the other way around would be to check out from the legend on the right, if I only want to see crimes that involve uh, theft from vehicle, I just check out the rest and I'm only able to see theft from vehicle on the map. So that is how, that is how you can add Streamlit um, widgets to your map, to your, to your data app and also and also customize a few things here and there. Uh, this is just limited to your own imagination, whichever way you want to make it look like. I think at that point, I will, uh, uh, let's, 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 look, let's look at the, the questions that you have so far, then we move to now deploy the, the app. Um, we can, there is only one question still. Uh, so we can take, uh, okay. Uh, how can someone interested in their data science get their first internship? Okay, uh, I will talk about this in the end. So post any questions related to Streamlit, uh, go to slido.com and then use the, the hashtag or the, the, the code Streamlit to be able to post your questions. So post your questions here. I will be going through them in the in the course of the in the course of the session. So we are coming back to that shortly. So to deploy on Streamlit, what you need is one, you need a GitHub account and then you also need to sign up with, with Streamlit. So for my case, I had gone ahead and created um, a repository. It's called test, uh, test repo. So I'll just copy that link so that I'm able to initialize and push my changes to Git. So once once you do that, you also need to sign up with uh, with Streamlit. So you just head over to streamlit.io because this is where we'll be deploying uh, the app. So I will come back to this. For now, we are on Git. So our folder that we are working on is was not initialized as a Git repository. So what I will do, what I will do is to initialize this test folder. So uh, I will use the command git need to initialize the repository. And then after, that's like, after initializing the repository, you already see the changes here. So it's like you, 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 that means the changes that I have on my file are unstaged. And so what do I need to do with them? I need to add them to the staging area after making the changes. So I do, um, I add them using it, it add and I want to add all of them. So I use dot at the end. So all the changes are added and then I commit the changes. Hmm. It commit. So that's the the initial commit. Uh, what? Uh, there is, let me look at this, sorry. So we have, ah, okay, uh, I get it's missing one, one command here, that's, um, okay. so 
I commit all those changes. And then after that, now I add the remote repository to this local repository. So you just do git remote add, uh, git remote add origin. And then give the link to the repo which I had copied so that um, all the changes that we have committed goes to goes to that repo and now when we when we come back to our repo here and uh, reload reload uh, there is only one brand and yeah i haven't pushed the changes to github so after committing and uh, and and initializing with the remote repository now i push i push my my changes to to the online repository so i'll do it with push so once that is done uh still thinking whether to push or not uh if 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 you have any questions do head over to slido.com and use the code stream lead to post your questions over here so that i can answer them uh thank you so much wanja for posting the first question i will be able to answer this in the uh, before the session ends all right, so GitHub requires me to authenticate and my username on GitHub is just Vivian uh, and Ping. By the way, this feature is getting duplicated in GitHub. So if you haven't enabled two-factor authentication, you need to do it soon. So all the changes are that I committed are now taken to the online repository. Eighty-two percent done. Uh, all right. Um, Um, can I show us another hub I have deployed on Streamly and a geographical just a preview? Yes, I am going to show you actually. Um, I'm going to show you an app, two of them for that matter. I'm going, uh, thank you so much for that question. <laughs> I am going to show you two other apps I have built on Streamly. So that changes is made. For now, we are still learning how to deploy. So once you do that on Git, um i think because our git has a new there's a new branch it's called master but there is another branch they are called called main so i will check out of the master branch and then match the the two check out master uh no i need to get check out So once I'm in the main branch, I'll do git git merge master, and I will allow it to I don't want the errors while merging. Um, so it does that, and then I will also push all the changes to main. It push. Origin main. Uh, so once all of that is done, uh, we will just go right ahead and That is my GitHub repo now. Yeah. 
So the changes are affected and we can we can come back to to the report, to the test report and reload. And voila, we have we have we have the everything over here. So once we are here, now we, we go right ahead to Streamlit. And then once you sign up to Streamlit, it should allow you to add your applications from GitHub over here. So if you haven't you haven't uh, signed up for Streamlit, please go ahead. Uh, it will be useful in deploying your machine learning and data science projects. Okay, so whoever wanted links to my, I'm going to give all of these links. These are apps I have done extremely. Uh, for now, we are adding the new app from the existing repo. Okay, okay, I have reached the limit uh, of my free apps, so I have to drop one. <laughs> No, I'm not just about to drop one because this one we have here is live already. So once you get to this stage, you just come to add app and then it will allow you to add from an existing repository where you choose the, the file to run. Uh, the file to run can be different names. So like for the test file, our file to run will be app.py. So everything loads after that, after it loads, then uh, then it, it gives you a, a shareable link like the one I have here. So like this one, if, if I share this one in the chat, you can be able to click on it. It will be, uh, if I share that on the chat, you can just click on it and, and look at it right away. Okay, uh, because you also wanted the other links, I have also done other projects. Um, let me show you this one. And this one we did in collaboration with uh, someone else. So this, this is just a data set on uh, <coughs> financial inclusion in East Africa, the three countries. And the, the application that I have over here um, still has the data set page. And this is where we did the results for our analysis are here. Um, and we have, first of all, you have uh, from the uni, uh, univariate analysis, we have different results and the results were plotted in this drop down. So a uh, univariate analysis for the bank account for an access, education, employment, blah, blah, blah. Right now, let's look at data distribution. And I just want to, this is a violin plot with uh, data dis distributed. So um, after that, uh, the X axis and then let, let let me select my app is still running. I will select a bank account to see how uh, the the distribution of data across the three countries is um, for the two genders, that is the male and male and the female gender. So I'm also going to give this link on the charts while it's loading. Control C. Um, can also head over there in your own time. Uh, you can also head over to my GitHub repo uh, and give it some likes, show it some love. Uh, uh, really appreciate. So um, you see how the violin plots look like uh, and the distribution. You can look. You can see the. You can actually see the kernel density estimation, and you can see the upper quartile and lower quartile. And then you can also see how data is distributed. And yeah, you can do, you can interact with it whichever way you want to. Um, and then there is the part for the prediction model. This is where now you predict whether an individual has a bank, has a bank account or, or not based on certain geographical, uh, no, based on certain uh, bio data that is provided. So, it loads the train and test data set, and then um, because here it, the model is preloaded, but we can still train it with a different data set. And you select this out of this, and then uh, should be able to predict. So like say that, uh, anyways, just interact with it and then predict. When you predict, it displays a message telling you what the app has done. Um, 
I will go back to the apps. Mm, no. I will go back to my apps and there is another app or, that I did on uh, COVID-19 sentiment analysis and um, I will also share the results for that one over here. Yeah. So they all have links to my GitHub repo and stuff. You can, and I have also tried to document uh, the code and everything as much as I can. So it will help you from a very, uh, a very basic level, from a beginner level all through to an advanced level. So this was data all on, uh, you know, um, COVID-19 uh, sentiment analysis in Nairobi. Um, you can be able to play around with it and see, uh, like here, I'm just looking at the number of tweets per day, um, or I just decide to look at the, uh, if you want to see the sentiment scores, uh, how does it perform, or uh, what is people's attitude, are they very positive or are they very negative about uh, COVID-19, and then also how to explain that based on the data that you have. So you see like uh, the results I'm finding here from the lexicon I was running, it gives a result of like 25% uh, are positive with joy, um, trust. This is because, and I showed the data set here, this is because you realize that the words that are used in most of the tweets, a word like say, um, I want I want to give a word here. Mm. Am I at the top of this data set? So sometimes when you work with data, you also need to understand your data uh, and why it's giving certain results. So uh, there there are words like say country or words like church, which are positive in the classifier. When in real sense, we know that people who are not happy about COVID-19 because they felt maybe their their religious rights were being curtailed and stuff. So it, it will classify that one under this. So in your interpretation, you know, basically a larger proportion of the people are negative. And of course, it adds to these numbers for fear and those who are negative. So that makes like almost a uh, majority of it as negative values. Yeah, and you can change, you can view like the top eight on that pie chart and stuff. So those are some, and uh, there's, there's also another model coming up on this that's able to determine polarity in terms of um, uh, how strongly positive or how strongly uh, negative they, they are. Um, so that one answers the question on, can I show you another app to be here? So, okay. Is the prediction model deployed the same way as exploratory analysis? Ah, cool. So um, I think what you're wondering here is like, is it the same way I can do exploratory analysis? Is it the same way I can do? I think it's it's almost the same. It's almost the same for me. Why why do I say so? It's because you just have to interact with the different streamlit. Uh, streamlit, streamlit widgets, and if you go to so according, to, it's only your imagination that will limit you. Uh, if you go to streamlit.io, there are also very good and excellent apps here. If you go like to this gallery, you'll be able to find a lot. So I just, I just wanted to show you something. The the cheat sheet for Streamlit, it's also there. So if you look at that cheat sheet for Streamlit, it has a number of widgets that you can play around with to do what you want. Because like say, the prediction model for me is, um, it's I'm basically just using buttons and also drop down menu. So the drop down is picking values from the model or, or values from the columns of our data and then the buttons to submit and then I'm using I'm using some other widgets to display the information that I'm getting from there. So uh, 
it, it is the same. Why? Because you just render information the same way. The only difference is that you, at one point you're doing visualization and at another point you're doing modeling, which is actually now machine learning on Streamlit. Um, that's a topic like for another one hour, we can do, we can do a simple demo on machine learning for Streamlit. Uh, so you see all of this, all of these are, this, you see where I was getting the beta columns here. These are containers that can help you to, uh, they can help you to lay out your map, to lay out your, lay out your app and uh, these are just, if you go through this cheat sheet on Streamlit, you will be able to learn a lot. And then there are also other awesome apps in the, in the gallery. Uh, when you come to the gallery, there is a ton of apps over here. The good thing about it is that when you, you, you can look at the gallery based on what you want. So like say if I'm only interested in data visualization, that's what I look at. If I'm interested in NLP, say like Game of Thrones analysis, you want to see how that person did GOT. Um, uh, <laughs> don't ask me questions on GOT because I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of movies, but I liked how this analysis was done. Um, um, so you, you can be able to see how this person did this, their analysis and you can see their app over here. So th the reason why we were doing multi-layered multi apps is to avoid everything in one page. You see like all of it is just in one page. Yeah. So to avoid this, um, you can use the, the multi-layered uh, um, you can design multi-layered web apps for your, and you can do up to, up to, you can do up to image recognition projects on Streamlit. This is a good way to even present your final year projects or present something to your boss because at the end of the day, they're not interested in looking at your code. They just want to see reports and results. And if you display something like this, they understand much better and very fast. So, um, I will pick another question, but uh, as I pick the last, the question on, on uh, uh, how can someone interested in data science get their first internship in the data science field, considering opportunities required two to three years of experience in data science. Cool. Um, uh, as I talk about that, there is one final question, I think, uh, that you will now have to answer. Like, as I answer that question, also respond to this poll on Streamlit. So just once again, um, go to Streamlit and uh, uh, rate the, your overall understanding um, on Streamlit. Is it much more simpler right now after this event, or is it much more complex? Um, so just head over there on a scale of one to five, just rate it so that we can be able to see if it's much more clear right now um, with the explanation given and the resources that I have also shared. So um, as you respond to it, when you go to slido.com, use the code Striblit, and then you'll find that poll active. Yeah, just respond to it. So as I respond to Wajah's question on the overall, how to get your first data science internship when they require two to three years of experience. I think when you are still in college, one thing you need to do is get involved in communities. Like say right now you're, you're here in, in data science East Africa. From here, you get to meet people. You might find someone following the event and you have wanted to talk to them in a long time. You can easily hit their inbox and then get feedback from them, yeah? So uh, uh, get, get engaged in communities and be active in those, in those communities, okay? So being active in communities will help you in one way. You gain experience, say like um, you are, you are a core team lead in your college, like 
for us in our time we used to have uh we had developer students student clubs so if you are maybe a core team lead or you are the team lead for developer students club or you are heading a group in the in like say the data science track that is experience if you if you lead that group for one year that is experience in managing people and that is something you can pull up on your on your cv yeah another way is to do projects do as many projects as you can if you are in your first year second year third year of study you have plenty of time just to work on projects by the time you are done with college you will have had a number like say even 10 projects in data science that you have done and you that that is experience if you list it on your on your cv yeah um so get engaged in communities in data science communities i know deep learning ai i know like right now we're having data science east africa follow these communities see what they are up to and try to get involved um uh text people on linkedin uh and then you once you get someone maybe like someone who's really good at it then learn from that person you will also get a few tips and tricks so um i learned that also knowing people will easily get you will easily get you your next job or your next you know your next full-time job or part-time job and it is possible to even get jobs when you are still in college so yeah just work on communities work on projects uh polish your cv and put that as experience yeah if you if you take part if you take part in in a collaborative project that is experience communities like also omdena if you sign up there apply and you get through you will be able to gain experience because you are working with people and you are doing projects that is experience if you list it on your cv no no recruiter will deny you opportunity so by the time you will be done with college you will have covered close to even three years of experience if you are really active and you you want to get uh you want to get exposure so um i'm happy to see that um 50 percent of us are uh, happy with the delivery of the session and you can still respond to this poll uh just go to slido.com and use the code uh, streamlit then respond to this poll um how my as your understanding of streamlit improved okay um we have eight minutes to go so i will look at the last question look at the last question on uh, already working on the financial inclusion data any other previous one can do to boost their portfolio okay uh, uh other projects that you can do to boost your portfolio one i think you can work on in data science it's it's much more about the value of the projects that you do for example um look at the covid 19 or the financial inclusion data uh what business value can it give to an organization once you understand the business value of a project you are dreaming or you are just not sure but you're still thinking about a project i think that will be cool so like say for a project that you are doing it the overall goal to the organization is meant to cast cut down costs okay or it is meant to increase profits or it is meant to uh, reduce the cost of labor that is the overall objective that is what the manager understand they don't understand models yeah so if you're able to tell them this thing will cut down costs by this percentage this thing will improve sales by this percentage once you start learning how to uh, look at things from the business angle of it in any domain that you want then you can be able to pick up a project do and be able to talk about that project in your interview comfortably so an example is like we have we have animated maps yeah if you can like right now get a data set on covid-19 in kenya and visualize that i mean that is value because we are able to understand maybe like the different strains of covid in kenya and how they are distributed across the country or even in a specific county alone that is value because then it informs policy decision 
and it also informs budgetary allocations. Uh, how much do we need to take to say like maybe Kisumu right now? Because that is where you have a lot of cases. You can't take the same amount of resources or vaccines to a place that is less affected with uh, COVID-19. So just look at things from that angle in any domain, be it healthcare, education, uh, business, finance, it, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of domains that you can actually look at and uh, find projects to do that are of value. So that is one that I can easily think about, uh, you know, like right now. So in another domain, maybe another project will do if you are interested in any other domains. So, um, yeah, that leaves or right, brings me to the end of my presentation. Yeah. So you could still you could still respond. You could still respond to the polls over here on Slido. Otherwise, um, I, I will hand over now back to I will hand over back to Melissa. Um, that was such an amazing um, session. I think I've learned so much from you. Um, the only time I've interacted with Streamlit was a while ago. And I think if there's anyone who's in the who's in the audience would love to do a project, a guided project, so that they can like get to know uh, the way around Streamlit. If you're a student and you have a student, you can you can get uh, the Coursera for students account and do a, a Streamlit project. They're really really fun, um, and they they build your portfolio. Um, I think um, if there's anyone who has a question, they can just unmute right now before we wrap up or a comment or just want to give a vote of thanks. Mm. Oh yeah, uh, if you have joined a bit late and missed out on anything or you, you want to share this with someone, yeah, the recording will be put up to my latest uh, tomorrow, during the weekend, it will be put up on our Data Science um, YouTube channel. I think I will just share the link to our YouTube channel right now. Um, any other question before we wrap up? Uh, I don't know if Harun is still with us or he left. I think there's a tab that is open. Um, sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry about that. Um, let me share the YouTube. I'll, I'll share the YouTube channel in the group and also on our teacher Twitter handle. Um, if you've enjoyed the session, you can reach it and you can share about what you what you found most interesting. Um, with that, I think we'll wrap up the session. Thank you, Griffin, for the wonderful session. Um, Yes, we have been sharing previous sessions that we've had. I think we'll also have a follow-up session probably next Friday and tackle a different topic altogether. Um, if you're interested, you can still join us. I think I will put up, uh, I will share with you the details later on still on Twitter and um, for those who are in our WhatsApp group, and our Slack channel, I'll still share that. Yeah. Um, with that, I think we can wrap up. Thank you for the wonderful time. With, uh, for the wonderful time that we've had, um, you can leave. Um, yeah. 